In lesson one, I talked about the first lines of a poem by Hafiz, and we noticed that there are two comparisons in the bait. Mazra'e sabze falak, the green field of the sky, and dase mahinu, the sickle of the new moon. But what is the technical name for these comparisons, and where can I learn them in detail? Well, the critical study of such comparisons is carried out by a branch of knowledge known as ulume balagat, which is often divided into three books: badi, bayan, and maani. Badi discusses the cosmetics of a literary work, that is, how to make a poem more beautiful. Like when two or more words start with the same sound and it's pleasant to the ear. Dastaman dar saeed saqi yasimin saq bud. Or when a single word in a poem has two or more meanings at the same time. Bayan, on the other hand, discusses only four subjects: tashbi, istiare, majaz, and kenaye. But these four are the most important features of any poem. Without them, a poem is hardly called a poem. They are universals. You can find them in poems written in any language in the world. Just names are different. Some characteristics are different, but they are there. Maani, which means meanings, explores a set of rules that help you convey your meaning, express your meaning in a more effective and appropriate way. For example. If you like to emphasize something, Maani can give you a long list of techniques for doing so. By repeating a word, or by putting that word at the beginning of a line, or by using it afterwards, such as "except," everyone is kind to me except you. As we move from Badi to Maani, the figures of the speech become more and more subtle. More and more invisible, more and more difficult to recognize. From what I have explained now, it's clear that the phrase "da se mahino" falls within the scope of the book of Bayan. In general, any comparison in Persian is made up of four different parts. "Da se mahino" in its full form is no exception. The moon is like a sickle. With its curved and thin shape, in this example, the moon is the mushabah, mushabah, that is, it's likened or compared to something else. Sickle is the mushabahun be, mushabahun be, which means something is likened to it. Mushabahun be is practically. The most essential element in a tashbih, 
and in the future we'll hear a lot about it. Like is the adate tashbi, meaning it's one of a limited number of words that mean like or similar. Cho, chun, besane. The thin curved shape is the vajhe shabah, the common ground or the reason you describe two things as similar. Vajhe shabah forms the basis of any tashbi, but it is often absent from poems and therefore all its weight and significance goes to Mushabbahun Be. But why is Vachi Shabah omitted from many comparisons? Well, if I write Mahinu Dar Shikli Zahiri the appearance, Manandidasast, I have not written a very poetic sentence because, like a schoolchild, I have mentioned everything. I have spoon-fed the reader. So it is much more artistic if I just mention the Mushabbah and Mushabbahun Be and leave the reader to discover the Vachi Shabbah. By the way, Adat Tashbih is also crossed out because it weakens the comparison. Misle Chizi Budan is much weaker than Khudan Chiz Budan. In Persian, we almost always put the Mushabbahun Be at the beginning and add E sound before writing the Mushabbah. Das e mahenu, das e mahenu. Now we have a poetic noun phrase known as tashbih e balig. Tashbih e balig is a tashbih or comparison in which only the two more important elements are mentioned, but it doesn't have to be in the form of a phrase. So if I change the poem by Hafez, and I hope he wouldn't turn in his grave, I could say, Mah dasastu falak mazra'i sabs, and still we have two tashbih balir without having a noun phrase. However, tashbih balir in the form of a noun phrase called izafi tashbihi in Persian is very common in our literature. One of the benefits of tashbih balir is that it gets the reader involved. When he or she spends more time solving the problem of vach shabah, the poem gets more and more interesting, and the comparison will be remembered for much longer time. If you don't believe me, I can challenge you to a difficult test of tashbih balir. Here is one taken from a poem by Khagani, perhaps the greatest imagination of all Persian literature. Neshabur Karam, the Neshabur of generosity. Neshabur, now pronounced Neshabur, is a city in the northeast of Iran. Which word is the Mushabbah? Which word is the Mushabbahun Be? And last but not least, what is the Vachhe Shabbah? This is a difficult question. To answer this question, I must tell you about a tragic event 
that happened some 900 years ago in the greater Khorasan, khorasan e Turks living in the deserts of Central Asia invaded khorasan e The mighty king of the time, Sultan Sanjar, was unbelievably defeated at the hands of these nomads. He was captured and put in a cage. Then these invaders, called Quz, rushed to cities and towns, plundering them, setting fire to them, killing thousands and thousands of inhabitants, among them some very famous scholars. Today, few educated people know about this tragedy, but at that time it was headline news for many years and resounded in the works of poets and writers for decades. Before the Qos invasion, Neishabur was one of the most magnificent cities in the East. With a population of perhaps two million, it was the most prosperous center of trade and commerce, politics, science, etc. In the phrase neishabur e karam Neishabur is the Mushabbahun Beh. Karam, meaning unconditional generosity, is the Mushabbah. Vachya Shabbah is partly the wealth and prosperity associated with Neishabur and partly that tragic event I just told you. How do I know about this? Well, from the study of the entire Beit. تا قوز بخل آمده گرد نشابور کرم من به شهرستان ازلت خانمان آورده ام. Let me take you through مصره اول, the first line. تا قوز بخل آمده گرد نشابور کرم تا often means until, up to but sometimes it has other meanings. Here it means since, since the time. Qos. Qos Turks of Central Asia. Bokhl. Stinginess, meanness, opposite of generosity. Amade, have come. Girde, around. Amade, girde, neshabur. Have come around Neishabur. Have surrounded Neishabur. Have laid siege to Neishabur. Karam, unconditional generosity. Taqoz bukhla omade girde Neishabur karam means since the cause of meanness laid siege to the Neishabur of generosity. Misra'i-duvum, second line. Man be shahristan uzlat khanuman avardam. Man means I. Be, to, shahristan, city, uzlat. Seclusion, that is, living alone and away from others because you want to. Khanuman means home. Khanuman avardam means I have brought my home to, I have moved in. Here it means, of course, I have taken refuge in. Man be shahristan uzlat khanuman avardam means I have taken refuge in the city of seclusion. Ta quz bukhla omade gird nishabur karam من به شهرستان ازلت خانمان آورده ام. Since the cause of meanness laid siege to the Nishabur of generosity, I have taken refuge in the city of seclusion. Here the poet is speaking of his enemies who have painted an ugly picture of him and managed to disgrace him. As a result, his admirers Rulers, politicians, wealthy people have stopped their support for him. Therefore, the poet is living away from his hometown in a self-imposed exile.
Meanness has taken the place of generosity and he is now living in isolation, away from people. The poet connects this situation to the siege of Neishabur by Oz invaders, which forced thousands of people to escape from the city and take refuge in far-off places. There are three tashbih balir in this bait. Oz Bohl, Neshabur Karam, and Shahristan Ozlat. All are connected through a historic event. Such unusual comparisons, when the Mushabbah and Mushabbahun Beh have no connection at all, are called Tashbih Duro Shegift, meaning strange, far fetched Tashbih, and Khagani is the unrivaled master of that. Salamat mi kunan, wan mordo bi ro bi kunan. Salamat mi kunan, ro amda bi ro bi kunan. Salamat mi kunan, wan mordo bi ro bi kunan.